Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings. Today it's a slightly more problematic day because they're digging up the road and resurfacing it outside. So every now and again there's loud bleeps and then an almighty horrible graunching noise. It's not me or the dog, oh, there it goes again, it's not me or the dogs, it's the road surfacing chaps. Anyway, today I'm going to continue with my test of papers. I have a tiny Rhodia notepad, I wanted to see if that's the same I want to just show you this, excuse me a minute. This is what happens when a dog gets bored, she jumps up at you, trying to persuade you to have a conversation with her instead of the camera. She's gone. Right, so Rhodia, tiny little notepad. There's a nice Clairefontaine Cahier, which I want to try out. I have an old Rhodia, uh, sorry, not Rhodia, Moleskin which is slightly different, and I don't know if it's the same paper or not, but this is a journalist's notebook, which I thought might be interesting to test. And then, because I've done all of my tests of inks on a wonderful Tomo River cahier from Goulet Pen Company, that's using 68 GSM paper though, this is one of Brian Goulet's 52 GSM notebooks. I want to see how that compares. Now I'm just going to warn you, today I'm doing the same tests as I've done before, which are using one point millimeter stub Twisby Goes. That noise really is appalling, I apologize. And one's using Noodler's Base 8 Blue, which is horrible ink, it goes through everything. And the other is using Sera from Diamine. Now, those are great tests, but what I'm going to be doing in future is also testing a medium nib, possibly a fine nib as well, on the same papers using different inks. This will be using Saddle Brown in my Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. I've also got my Steel Age which I'll be using with a fine nib. So it's just so that people get a good feel for the different types that must be a rolling machine to flatten the road surface. So you get a good feel for really wet inks, really horrible inks like Base Tape Blue, and then a variety of other inks with finer or medium type nibs. So hopefully that'll give you a good feel for things. I am not now going to record actual writing because I'm really short on time. So today I've given you an introduction. I will now go away and do some writing. I will then film the results of that writing and give you a summary afterwards. Hope that works. If it doesn't, well, <laughs> tough. That's all I can do today. Take care. Thanks a lot. Cheers. And now here we are again, just in time for a cup of tea. Oh, that is good. Right. You'll be pleased to see that I have already cleaned out my Twisby Go. I didn't want it to get stained and Noodler's Base State Blue is vicious ink. If you get it in a pen, it will stain. So first of all, let's have a quick look at this Rhodia notepad. Only a small Rhodia notepad. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Now I can see no sign of any feathering at all there. The Twisby with the Sierra in didn't start very well. I had to start it properly. But um, that's not a fault of the pen, really. It's been left alone for over a week. If we look at the back, that's actually still perfectly usable. That's really good paper. The area where I had a slight blot obviously went through, but that's something... I don't blame the paper for that. That's something that just happens. This here is the Clairefontaine paper. Now, I always think of Clairefontaine as being higher quality Rhodia. There is very slight feathering on the F of Clairefontaine with the Sierra. There is very slight feathering with the Bay State Blue. If we look at the back, it really does show through quite badly. So, good for using on one side, not for two sides. I'm going to save that one for last, because I think that's going to be interesting. This is the Rhodia Reporter's Notebook. And, as you can tell, I just did it slightly differently this time. 
Test of the moleskin paper in one of their reporter's notebooks and the quick brown fox. There is pretty bad feathering there. I can see all the individual strands of paper. Far less so with the sera. It's still there, just, but it's nothing like as bad. What's it like on the other side? If I can get to the other side of this piece. Oh yes, that's consistent with what I would expect from a moleskin notebook. Um, absolutely appalling bleed through. So, for me, moleskins are beautiful. They've got lots of history. They're wonderful and pretty damn useless for using with a fountain pen. This one I am looking forward to seeing. This is the 52 GSM Goulet Pen Company with Tomo River. Here you go. 48 sheets, 96 pages, A5, 52 GSM. So how is this looking? This is, I must admit, this felt just delightful to write on. And that is very interesting, actually. There's absolutely no feathering whatsoever. And my word, I could easily write both sides of each of these really thin sheets of paper without any problem at all. And they are just wonderfully thin. But they've got a lovely feel to them. They're very smooth, almost silky. And ink just doesn't soak in at all. It's superb for writing on. I think those are things I'm going to have to get hold of. I'm going to show you this. This is a silly one. Let's just see what it looks like. This is a notepad called Mr Big. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. There is a little bit of feathering. Not too bad on the Bay State Blue. On the Sierra, no, nothing at all really. And on the reverse, the Bay State Blue does show, the Sierra doesn't at all. This is wonderful. I really like the fact that those nice workmen outside, as soon as I stopped talking with the introduction, basically buggered off. I would have re-recorded the beginning, but I think it'll be adequate and it's quite fun having the dog show ahead in it as well. So, right, let's get on with it. First one, the Rodia. That I was surprised at. I would have expected much more shadowing and bleed through on the other side. There's nothing at all, really. That, I think, is really impressive. That notepad gets a big thumbs up. This, less of a thumbs up. But I do love these Clairefontaine notepads. They are really gorgeous little things. And if you weren't using a 1.1 very wet stub nib, if you've got a medium nib, if you've got a broad nib, you probably if you've got a double broad nib, these, this paper would be fine. It's only the Noodler's Bay State Blue that really shows through. I'm a poet. So I, I, I still love that. I'm going to keep going with that. The interesting one was this. Mwah. The Tomo River from Brian Goulet. It is fantastic paper. It is a joy to write on. It feels marvellous. And there's something very strange going on. Because the Sierra, which I've always loved, has almost got a greenish tinge to it. And I'm going to take a photo of this later to try to demonstrate the fact. But for my money, that's clearly the best the very best paper and notepad. But I'm just going to finish up with this. Mr Big. This is one of those stupid little things, but it's a story I'm going to tell you anyway, so tough. I happened to be doing a signing tour with a mate of mine, Quentin Jardine, and we went all across the States, and while in New York I wanted to find something that was sort of suitable for me. So while walking around the stores, I found a little shop that was selling stationery. And I saw this notepad and I thought, that paper really looks and feels rather delicious. I thought, I'm going to buy that as a little memento of New York. So I did. And when I got back to the UK, I loved this notepad so much, I really used it quite a lot while I was away in the States. Lots of writing, lots of pictures, all sorts of stuff. So when I got back to the UK, 
I thought, I wonder if I could find out where that was made. And I happened to glance at the back and it says made in the UK. And I thought, well, how crazy is that? And there's a phone number on it. And the phone number is an 01647 number. Now, that won't mean too much to you if you don't live actually around here, because that's the next door phone number from my own home phone number. So I thought, oh, let's give it a try. So I phoned and the delightful chap there who owns this company called Right Note said, well, yeah, I live in Chagford. That's where we make these things. Chagford's about 10 miles that away. So I flew all the way to the States to discover a nice little notepad that's made 10 miles away. That's what you call air miles. Anyway, I still think this is glorious paper. It takes any type of pen. It's very happy with all types of ink. Lovely smooth feel to it. Not quite as smooth as the Tomo River and considerably fatter. I would say it's 80 to 90 GSM. But even with the horrible noodler's base state blue, it just does not come through. You can't really see where the zero was written. So big thumbs up to me. If you see any of these notepads, and they're made, as I say, by a company called Write Note, I can thoroughly recommend them. Not because I've ever met the bloke, I haven't. Not because I know anything at all about him. I don't. But the paper and the notepads are superb. And that is your lot for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to help keep this channel going, Go down to the link underneath here and there's a link to my Patreon site if you'd like to help with that. If not, there's various things always go up most weeks, so just have a quick look at whatever you fancy. Then underneath that, put in any comments, hit the bell button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, all of those good things, you know what to do. And in the meantime, I'm going to have a cup of tea and go and get on with some work. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye. Well, go on, go away. <laughs>